Yeah. So, how'd you get into chess that? Well, well, you know, probably like I was raised up around a lot of games. So there was a lot of uh, a lot of people playing games, board games, sports games. So kind of learned chess early, but then didn't really get serious or study at chess till I got in high school or something like that. Yeah. Who's the person that taught you how to play chess? Uh, I taught myself how to play chess. What you mean? You know, studying books, mm -hmm. encyclopedia, see other people play, then I taught myself. You taught yourself how to play? Yeah. Yeah, ain't that, that was a, a, some Alakin <laughs> origin story? <laughs> no, that's just a, a real champion. Right? <laughs> just, what was that Capablanca? <laughs> no, no, that was like during the pressure boom. Everybody playing chess, so you go get the encyclopedia. I was the only one who knew how to play chess, so I taught myself. And then I taught other people how to play. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's how everybody learns how to play in my family. Yeah, what age did you learn how? Or teach yourself how to play. Well, you know, I said in high school. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was doing the, well, didn't have a bunch of money to buy nothing. So, you know, tearing pages out of encyclopedia books. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And, checking and, books out from the library, not taking them back. And will you tell people what the Fisher Boom is? Fisher Boom was when Fisher was world champion and chess was all on TV and imprint and on the news and you know everybody got excited. Yeah. Then there was one dude in the community that came in and started coaching, and that was Zeb Fortman. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like a really good player too. You know, but he always told me that he ain't never seen nobody who had that hunger and that want to really go into it. You know, he's been teaching chess ever since he taught us. And he said our crew was like the best crew he ever had. People feared us when we came to tournaments. Mm, what's this about? Oh, man. <laughs> I knew it. I knew I should have just laid off. The, oh Lord, why are you always on this? I'm about to strategy. It seemed like chess guys. Uh, it seemed like there's just a way of thinking that everybody thinks that way, and then it kind of makes your game better. And then the only difference between you and them is your ability to assess the position and to calculate variations. Because we both got the understanding of what I need to do. I'm just not doing it. You know, that kind of stuff. Well, what I need to do, you stopping me from doing it. You know, I ain't good enough to enforce the strategy or the concepts that I need to do. So, you know, that, that's, that's part of chess, you know, trying to get the best out of yourself. So, you know, I came up with models, different ways of trying to solve a problem, because chess is like problem solving. So I got different models. I had to assess the position, you know, because you get a lot of time. So... One of them is check captures and threats, you know. The other one, I'm looking for candidate moves. You know, all of them lead to the best position, you know. So when I'm trying to find the best move, I use different modes. Middle school, and then I start playing other folks, and how do I start doing versus them? Hmm. Well, you were doing okay. You weren't exactly the top boards because uh, some of them kids, all they've been in the school system a long time. But eventually you'll catch up with them like you did at South when you finally caught up to senior year. You know, catch up with the with the people that were on top. Yeah. So yeah, once you start studying and you know, getting into organized chess lessons, I think you got better. I don't know if anybody gave you any lessons besides me coaching you. Did you take any private lessons? No. Yeah. Um, how did you feel about DJ getting better? Were you proud? Were you like wanted him to get better? Were you? How did you feel? Yeah, yeah, I wanted them to play in more tournaments, but you know he had other interests, and you know going to tournaments and winning all the time wasn't easy. So, yeah, I was glad to see him in the chess, and you know I kind of believe that, you know, everywhere I went, he could go. There was no place where I went that he couldn't go. So I tried to keep it like that. Go black man reading, he go black man reading. Go chess club, he go chess club. Go tournament, he go tournament. 
you know, trying to keep him under my wings, get him go bowling. He go bowling. Now he bowls. He's like almost 200 average. And, you know, and proud of that. How, how does it feel? Oh, it feels good. You know, he can beat me. I don't think he can beat me in no rated chess game, but, you know, <laughs> no, not no slow one. I think I'm going to win or I'm going to draw. That's what I'm thinking. But, you All know, right. it could be different. You know, he knows some stuff now. He's 2,000, you know. But, you know, it's just, it's just hard to play a whole weekend at a chess tournament now. But, you know, when DJ was in chess, I'd take him and go through that, you know. So you feel proud. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'd be proud when he come back and, you know, take the chess world by storm, show up on the scene and shock the world, you know what I mean? That's going to be even prouder, you know. Mm -hmm. But right now, he don't want to do no classical chess right now. <laughs> <laughs> Go into the open and shock the world, you know, that kind of stuff, you know. That's kind of stuff. Or at least take down with I am or something, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. As far as, you know, like, my history is I've been taking out masters like almost all my life. Like, I am's, 2,500 players. I've played enough of them because I've been in the right spots to play them, New York and stuff like that, Kansas City. But, you know, you got to be in the open section to even get a chance to play those kind of people. And Kansas City always had open, you know what I mean? We didn't have a whole bunch of players. So every time I come to a tournament, I've got to check the paperwork to say Mike Brooks there because if he there, I ain't going, you know what I mean? Because I'm trying to win money when I come to chess tournament. So that, that was part of my motivation coming up too, you know. In the last round, I'm playing for the money. I don't know about nobody else. The Don Hooker is playing for money in the last round. And then the last round, they always got a master trying to keep me from winning the money. You know what I mean? So, therefore, some masters got to go down or something because I got to try to win money. Uh, state happened. Uh, and I was in the open section of Ooh. state. Or there was one section in state that mm -hmm. year. And I ended up getting time for third place. Mm. Cause oh, like, yeah, in the open section yeah, with a low rating. Because I was like a uh, 1,000 or like I was 1,100. Mm -hmm. And it was two masters above us, me that tied for first, mm -hmm. Michael Yang and Kevin Boo. And then I tied with Matt Dahl for third, who was also a chess master. Yeah. Yeah. And then above a, a bunch of experts, too. So. Yeah, yeah. So that happened my senior year, and then I took that momentum. And uh, I, I remember being real mad because uh, Nationals ended up being the best part about going to Nationals is you get to travel and stay in the hotel, yeah. and, and it's all nice. And then it was my senior year of high school, and they was like, it's downtown. And I was like, what do you mean it's downtown? <laughs> Just in Minneapolis this year. I was like, I don't want to go to Minneapolis. <laughs> like, yeah. The yeah. best part is traveling. Yeah. Well, you know, I had that uh, home field advantage, though. Yeah. And yeah. so at Nationals, they have like five sections separated by rating, and I was playing in the second highest division. And I ended up winning 7-0. Mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Got a lot of traction out of that. But he's pretending he's catfishing as someone he's not, he's not good. With Seward, and we placed really well there. And uh, I saw Maurice Ashley there, and I was telling him, I said, yeah, my son DJ and you, y'all had one of those fresh air programs together. You know, he won, you know, 7-0, and oh, said, really? And then he started playing with his telephone, he like, Yep, sure it is. <laughs> you know, he like he said, I do a lot of stuff. He said, I don't even listen to all of it. He said, but yep, he sure did. I said, he said, I'm listening to it. So. I said, yep, yep. He said, okay. Yeah, he, he used to say I had success on the national on the national level, so I should have been getting some traction for that, you know. Who did? Maurice Ashley. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because um, you have coached several national winning teams, yeah, right? Yeah. And have several national champions. Yeah, yeah. In different divisions. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Right after that, 
you know, graduating from high school. I don't know what your rating was coming out of high school. It was it was around uh, 1900. Because I made, I, I, made uh, I got like 800 points in like those four months. Oh, yeah? Okay. Between state and nationals. And then I did one more tournament afterwards. Hmm. Um, and then that put me up to 19, like 40, 50. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. And for us to volunteer and go to the library. Well, you know, just to create a lot of, you know, just just get back to the community, teach the kids problem solving skills, you know, always say praise them and raise them, talk to them real nice, tell them to get out their pieces, talk about planning and problem solving, you know, just sit there, just always, you know, play through a game, and they learn and they get their under. That's what I do, you know, I kind of do the Michael Jordan approach. Before I start all that stressing and coaching and teaching and getting people to care about winning, I first got to create a love for the game. It got to be fun, you know what I mean? They got to be, because if it's fun, that mean they're going to play longer. You know, I ain't got to be around. They want to play. They want to go on chesskids.com. Look at some videos on their own. I try to teach kids how to study. <clears throat> Jeff said, if you teach the kids all that, what do they need you for? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I said, that's what I'm doing. I'm teaching kids to be independent. I don't want to, they have to be able to do stuff while I ain't around. 